Now, as I said before, the electromagnetic spectrum is based upon wavelength of different kinds of radiation. The, the EM spectrum is arranged from longest to shortest wavelength. Now, in this case, the longest waves are over here on the left-hand side, and the shortest are over on the right-hand side. Now, in your notes, you have the exact same diagram that you're seeing right here on the screen. Now, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of different things, labeling things on here, so make sure that you label everything that I do so that you can use this to study. Here we go. First, let's write down uh, the different types of radiation. Now, radio waves are the longest wavelengths, and therefore they go on the very far left side. The next type of radiation is microwaves, followed by infrared. You can do IR for short. Now, visible light is right in the middle, followed by ultraviolet or UV light. Now, remember, we're getting uh, to smaller and smaller or shorter and shorter waves now. Now, after UV, we have X-rays. And then finally, over on the very far right with the shortest waves, we have gamma radiation. Okay, so let's talk about wavelength, frequency, and energy. Pause the video and label where you think the longest and shortest waves are. Where the high and the low frequency and the high and the low energy are. So you're going to have six different things that you're going to be labeling. Pause the video, do it. All right, so radio waves are going to have the longest waves, which means that they also should have the lowest frequency and the lowest energy. Whereas gamma rays over here, they've got the shortest waves, so that should also mean that they have the uh, highest frequency and the most energy. Okay, so uh, the longer the wave, the lower the frequency, also uh, kind of the lowest energy as well. Okay, there we go. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about our thermometer down here, this temperature. Okay, again, pause the video and label where you think uh, you're going to have the highest temperature waves and the lowest temperature waves. Now, hopefully you remember that temperature is just a measure of how fast particles are moving. So the low temperature should be by the radio waves, and the high temperature should be over by the gamma rays. Okay. Now that we have all that stuff down, let's quickly discuss how we use each type of energy, us humans, how we use them. Okay. Just another uh, example of the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, kind of... Same thing, you've, saw, you've seen this before. Uh, this is also another good visual, kind of helps you see how long the waves are and kind of temperature down here on the bottom. Okay, but uh, let's talk about how we use these things. So we have radio waves over here on the very far left. Okay, now radio waves, uh, we use those for listening to the radio, listening to music, uh, you know, communication, uh, some Cell phones use radio waves. You know, we got walkie-talkies. Those were one of my favorite things to play with when I was a little kid. And then remote controls also use radio waves. So your remote for your television, if you had a remote control car. Um, microwaves, what they do is they take uh, the water molecules in your food and they make them wiggle faster. Because remember, temperature is just how fast particles are moving. So if I move water particles in your food faster, those water particles are going to bump into your food particles, making your food uh, hotter as well. Infrared or IR uh, radiation is just kind of like heat energy. So uh, night vision goggles, those things pick up infrared radiation. Um, and then next we have the visible light. Can we use visible light, you know, obviously to see. Let's keep going. After visible light, we have ultraviolet or UV light, and this is the stuff that uh, burns your skin, so it's that uh, energy from the sun will burn your skin, that's why you need um, sunscreen. However, ultraviolet light is also really fun to play with. Uh, if you've ever you know, seen or have a, a, a black light, black lights uh, have ultraviolet radiation, okay, and they do some really funky things to your clothes. They do something, well, they make them glow, and that glowing process is this word right here, fluorescence. And that fluorescence does some really cool things to not only your clothes, but uh, animals. Uh, some animals glow in the dark, like there's a really cool species of scorpion. Uh, and then some rocks and minerals that actually glow in the dark, too, because of uh, this uh, fluorescence deal. 
Now we know all about x-rays. We use those to go through um, objects so that we can see if you have cavities in your teeth or maybe you have a broken bone. Um, you know, airport security, you put your luggage on the thing and it rolls through the uh, x-ray machine and they can look in there and see if you got anything you're not supposed to have in there. Uh, the government can also use x-rays to do some surveillance kind of security things. I'll show you a picture of that here in just a second. And then last but not least, we have gamma radiation. And gamma radiation, as you can kind of see, is used to sterilize medical equipment. You know, like dentists, the tools that they use you know, to clean your teeth, well, those tools, uh, they use them over and over. They've been in other people's mouths, so they have to clean them, and gamma radiation is able to do that. Uh, and then gamma radiation also uh, helps with um, cancer therapy, like radiation therapy. They use gamma radiation for that. Okay, so government's able to use x-rays to kind of take a look at, um, you know, things that are maybe crossing over the border, just check and see if maybe there are uh, smuggling illegal immigrants into the country. Okay, now stars are made of a mixture of gases. Now even though those stars are so far away, scientists are able to determine what elements are in each star. They do this because each element has its own specific spectral lines, these things right here. And those spectral lines are kind of like the, the star's fingerprints. When we look at these spectral lines using something called a spectroscope, we are able to take the light coming from distant stars and turn that light into the spectral lines. Scientists have determined that each star is also unique, meaning there are no two stars that have the exact same spectral lines. Now, scientists are also able to determine the temperature of a star based on the color of light coming from the star. Now, I think you guys already have experience with this. Now, imagine a bonfire. What color is the fire that is furthest from the source of the flame? Hopefully you're thinking red. Now the red color flame is actually the lowest temperature of the whole entire you know, fire. As you look closer and closer to the center of your flame, you should notice that the color of the flame turns to orange and then to yellow, eventually blue or white. The blue or white part of the flame is the hottest part of the flame. Now stars kind of work the same way. Red stars are the coolest, you know, about 4,000 degrees Celsius. I mean, that's still god-awful hot, but it's actually pretty cool compared to some of the other stars out there. Now, our sun is more of like a yellow star. I mean, it's slightly warmer than the red ones, you know, 5,500 degrees Celsius. However, it's the blue and violet stars that are the hottest of them all. And, you know, a violet star is about 10,000 degrees Celsius. So next time you're looking at the stars, see if you, you know, look really close and see if you can see the different colors. You'll know that they're different temperatures. Now the images on the screen right now are the fingerprints to the stars. They're the spectra. Um, and there are three different kinds of spectra. There's continuous, this guy right here. You have emission, and then you have absorption. Now each one tells us a little different story uh, about our stars. Okay, and the uh, spectra kind of look, or work like this. You can have a sun or a star like ours go through a prism and we get the continuous spectra. Uh, that light can also you know, go through a cloud of gas. It can go through a prism then and we can either get the bright line or we can get the dark line spectra. So let's talk about the continuous spectra really quick. Now in a continuous spectra you get to see every single color of the rainbow in an unbroken band. Now this is just like you've ever played with a prism or a piece of glass to create a rainbow. Now even though this is really cool and interesting, it really doesn't help us determine what is actually in the star or what the star is made of. Now for that we have to use emission spectra. Now these are our fingerprints to the stars. Uh, and they're called, like I said, emission spectra. Emission spectra only show you the bright colors. Now each different element on the periodic table will give you a different set of bright lines. Sometimes there are only a few lines and others, other elements might have you know 50 or more. Based on the lines that you see you can determine the elements found in the star. So let's kind of take a look. Now scientists were able to determine the different lines for each element by putting the gas form of each element into a tube and then running electricity through the tube. When this happens 
the gas actually lights up, kind of like a neon sign. Scientists then looked at the spectral lines and made a chart of all of the known elements. They could then compare their chart of the known elements to what they saw in the stars to figure out what the stars were made of. And this is kind of what they get. So they have this gas tube running electricity through it, and then they get this fingerprint. What they do with this fingerprint is then compare it to all of the other elements on the periodic table and figure out which one of these matches uh, the elements. Okay, so this set of spectral lines right here is for hydrogen only, whereas this one down here is for helium. Absorption spectra are a little bit different. Instead of seeing the bright lines, we only see the dark lines. Again, these spectra can also be used to fingerprint the stars to determine the types of elements found in those stars. So that's it. Watch these sets of videos as many times as you need. All right, guys. Good luck.